فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد We are in the explanation of the kitab al-isbah fi bayan manhaj as-salaf fi at-tarbiyah wal islah We stopped at the 35th qa'ida and we're going to inshallah ta'ala today carry on from the 36th qa'ida bi'idhnillahi al-bari This qa'ida this principle inshallah ta'ala is wujub al-i'tidal fi al-hukm ala al-mukhalifin that it's obligatory that it's obligatory upon each and every one of us to be just and to be fair when we place a ruling on somebody when we're placing a ruling on an individual that we are just in the ruling that we place over them so this qaida is this principle is being just and fair when you're labeling somebody you have to be fair in that labeling you can't go extreme in exaggeration and you can't also fall into extreme in negligence wujub al i'tidal fi al hukm ala al mukhalifin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the quran wala taqrabu mal al yatim illa billati hiya ahsan hatta yablugha ashudda wa awfu al kayl wal mizan bil qist لا نكلف نفسا الا وسعها واذا قلتم فاعدلوا ولو كان ذا قربا وبعهد الله اوفوا ذلكم وصاكم به لعلكم تذكرون الله اوصى سيس يا ايها الذين امنوا كونوا قوامين لله شهداء بالقسط ولا يجرمنكم شنان قوم على الا تعدلوا اعدلوا هو اقرب للتقوى واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in the first verse وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ which is in Surah Al-An'am Ayah 152 Allah says وَإِذَا قُلْتُمْ when you say something فَعْدِلُوا be just when you speak about something be just وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَا قُرْبَى even if that individual is a close relative be just just because they are your relative that doesn't mean you support them in the falsehood be just and be fair and say that they are wrong even that they are their family member wa bi ahdi allah awfu and fulfill the covenant and the oath of allah dhalikum wasakum bihi la'allakum tadhakkarun this is the farewell advice that allah gives you subhanahu wa ta'ala so you may come to your senses and you may remember also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in surah al maida ayah 8 allah says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu those of you who believe Kunu be one, be individuals who are qawwameen, you're just. Lillahi, you are just in the cause of Allah. Shuhada'a bil qist, you are testifiers to justice and fairness. Wala yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala alla ta'adilu. And do not let the hate that you have for a people take away from you being just and being fair. I'adilu, be just. هو أقرب للتقوى that is closest to piety أما that is piety واتقوا الله and be conscious of Allah إن الله خبير بما تعملون Allah is aware and he knows every single thing which you do شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية he said عليه رحمة الله فإن السائرين على طريقة السلف يخطئون ولا يكفرون شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية said ذا أهل السنة والجماعة the people who are treading on the path of the Salaf, what they do is يخطئون. They say that the person got it wrong. They say these people, they got it wrong. ولا يكفرون, but they don't say these people are kuffar. 
They say they got it wrong. They're just. They say what they did is wrong. Lakin wala yukafiruna. But they don't make takfir on these people. Illa baqabat alayhi hujjatul risala. Except those who the proof has been established against them. Walihada qal al shafi'iyya. Because of that, al Imam al shafi'iyya, he said, La ana takalaba fi ilmin. For me to speak about a knowledge, yuqal li fihi. In which it will be said about me, Akhtata Shafi'i got it wrong. Ahabu is more beloved to me then. Min ala takalama fi ilmin for me to speak about a knowledge. Yuqalu li in which it said about me, Kafarta you have become a disbeliever. So what we take from this as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions is Ahli Sunnati wal Jama'a, the people who are treading on the path of the Salaf, Yukhati'oon. They place they say that the person got it wrong. Wala you kafirun. And they don't make takfir on the people and say, you're kafir, you're kafir. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah then brought the statement of who? Al-Imam al-Shafi'i. He said that Shafi'i said, for me to speak about a science or for me to talk about a topic and I get it wrong and I'm said that, okay, he got it wrong. It's better to me than to speak about a science. And then the people say to me, you've become a kafir. And then Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah went on to saying, he carried on saying, فَمِنْ عُيُوبِ فَإِنَّا فَمِنْ عُيُوبِ أَهْلِ الْبِدَعَ From the shortcomings and the faults of the people of innovation is تَكْفِيرُ بَعْضٍ بَعْضًا That they make takfir on each other. They label each other kuffar. وَمِنْ مَمَادِحِ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ أَنَّهُمْ يُخَطِّئُونَ وَلَا يُكَفِّرُونَ And as for Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'a, the people who are holding onto the path of the pious predecessors, they are praiseworthy, they are praiseworthy for what? that they say that the people got it wrong and they don't make takfir on the people. And al bid'ah like when you go against them, they'll say to you, you're a kafir. They, they jump to the extremest of, of things. They'll say that to you. Well, in we find the same token today. A group of people, when you do a mistake, they'll say to you, you're a mubtadi'ah. You are a mubtadi'ah. Ya akhi, I got a mistake. Nah, you're right, I did a mistake. But does that mistake reach a level of me leaving the sunnah? Being a mubtadi' now? No. But you know what it is? You have no justice. You're not fair. You're going against the ayah. وَلَا يَجْرِ مَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا إِعْدِلُوا وَأَقْرَبُوا لِلتَّقْوَىٰ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ To be just is missing from you. And fairness is missing from you. You had grudge against me in the first place. And so now you found a mistake and you're going to make that mistake bigger than what it really is. Well, some people are like, as Ibn al-Qayyim said, they like flies. They, they like the fly. Where does the fly land on? It will land on wounds and dirty and filthy places. You know, your body parts, if you've got a wound on somewhere, you've got pus coming out of your body parts and it's just ripped or you slipped and it's bled and it's become a bit. The fly won't go to any part of your body other than there. It will land on that part of your body. That's where it will land. You see, and uh, some people are like that, Ibn al-Qayyim said. They are like that. They only want the e they own, that's all they want. And if the person does one mistake, what they want to do is they want to bring about a thousand reasons and explanation and other points. They just want to add on to it. And it's only just one mistake. And they leave off the person's ocean of good. وَلِذَلِكَ the Salaf, the Ulama, Ahlul Sunnah, Ibn Abdul Barra, and Subki, and others, Ibn Qayyim as well, they all said, مَنْ ثَبَتَتْ عَدَالَتُهُ Anybody whose integrity and his nobility has been established. Oh yes, it's clear now this person is noble. ثَبَتَتْ عَدَالَتُهُ He's become known to be a righteous individual, or she's become known to be a woman of high integrity. She's known. ثَبَتَتْ عَدَالَتُهُ and it has become clear to the people, it is lam yajuz, it is not permissible to remove that certainty with doubt or with speculation. You can't remove that clear cut certainty which everybody was certain that this person was noble. The ummah are speaking good about him in terms of his religion, his practicing. It is not permissible for somebody to come and to now remove the certainty that's there based on a doubt, speculation, assumptions. Maybe, that's what he meant. Maybe, just... Nah. Ahlul Sunnah, I like that. Ibn Taymiyyah says in another place, in his Majmu'u al-Fatawa, he says, Ahlul Sunnah wal ilm the people of the Sunnah, the people who have true knowledge. Wal-Iman, the people who have true faith. 
Ya'lamuna al They know the truth. Pay attention. One of the distinct characteristics of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, my beloved brothers and sisters, is what? That they are known for is that they know the truth. They are people of knowledge. They know the Kitab and they know the Sunnah. Ya'lamuna al They know the truth. وَيَرْحَمُونَ الْخَلْقَ And they're very merciful to the creation. Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah are known for two noble characteristics. Al-ilmu wal-rahmah Knowledge. And they're very merciful to the creation. These are two distinct characteristics that should be yours. That you should be known for brothers and sisters. What is it? Al-ilm. Knowledge. Knowledge of what? Shaykh al-Islam Taymi carries on saying, يَتَّبِعُونَ الرَّسُولَ فَلَا يَتَّدِعُونَ They follow the messenger and they don't innovate. They know his sunnah. They follow it. Everything that the Prophet said, they say. Everything that the Prophet did, they do. Everything that the Prophet believed, they believe. Are you with me? So they follow the Prophet in, in totality. They are people of knowledge and implementation. And also he mentions that they are also merciful in the sense where By labeling or criticizing or blaming the one who Allah and His Messenger blamed. That they are, they only blame those who Allah and His Messenger blamed. Not those who they have grudges against or a people in which they have lola. They only rebuke, they only speak against, they only blame those who Allah and His Messenger blamed. And if the person comes with a striving, if a person does striving to deduct a ruling and he gets it wrong a, a, and he's excused by the messenger, the messenger excused him, meaning the kitab and the sunnah excused this person, they excuse them as well. They're very merciful like that. Today you find a people who are ulama, rasikhun, and they, have, they are ahlul ijtihad, meaning they reached a level of to come with striving and deduction of evidence. They got an issue wrong. They're ulama. They got it wrong. That wrong is actually, as the Prophet told us, a reward for them. Isn't that the case? The Prophet ﷺ told us that the scholars and the grounded people when they get a mistake, uh, when they get a, when they do a mistake, they get what? One reward. And if they get it right, how many rewards do they get? See, these people don't, don't want to, they want to belittle them and blame them and whatnot. So that's how Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah are. Justice and fairness is their characteristics. al qaidatu sabi'atu wa thalathun. So before I move on to the next qaida, Wallahi, brothers and sisters, Always have that with you. Be known and distinct for having knowledge. Don't be a jail person. That's not a noble characteristic. And also, the more your knowledge increases, the more you are merciful to the creation, and you're more merciful to the, pe the people. The more your knowledge increases, the more merciful you become. al qaida al The uh, 37th qaida. أن المخالفين لطريقة السلف واقعون بين الغلو والإرجاء. The people who this قاعدس is anybody who opposes the path of the salaf is either falling into extremism in exaggeration or extremism in negligence. Yes. Anyone who opposes the path of he opposes the path of the salaf. That person is going to fall into extreme in exaggeration or extreme in negligence. قال الله تعالى الله says in the Quran, يا أهل الكتاب لا تغلو في دينكم غير الحق لا تغلو في دينكم غير الحق ولا تتبعوا أهواء قوم قد ضلوا من قبل وضلوا كثيرا. قَدْ ضَلُّوا مِنْ قَبْلُ وَضَلُّوا كَثِيرًا وَضَلُّوا عَنْ سَوَاءِ السَّبِيلِ Allah also says, 
فخلف من بعدهم خلف ورث الكتاب يأخذون عرض هذا الأدنى ويقولون سيوفر لنا وإن يأتهم عرض مثله وإن يأتهم عرض مثله يأخذوه ألم يؤخذ عليهم ميثاق الكتاب ألا يقولوا على الله إلا الحق ودرسوا ما فيه والدار الآخرة خير للذين يتقون فلا تعقلون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us in these verses like the first one as he said in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Ayah 77, Allah says, Ya Ahl Al-Kitab, the people of the scripture, Ahl Al-Kitab, La taghlu fi deenukum, don't go extreme in your religion, don't go overboard. Now I ask you a question, the people of the Kitab, who are they? The Christians and the Jews. What did the Christians do? They went overboard with Isa ibn Maryam. What did the Jews do? They became negligent regarding the affairs of Isa ibn Maryam. They became negligent, negligent, meaning they didn't want to affirm for Isa ibn Maryam. They didn't want to affirm for Isa ibn Maryam prophecy. They said he's a liar. So, the Christians, on the other hand, they took Isa ibn Maryam out of being a human being. And they said he's no longer a human being. Rather, he's an ilah, yu'bad. He's a, he's a ilah and he should be worshipped. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he warned us against those two parts. Allah warned us against those parts. He says, all oh, those of you who hold on to the scripture, لا تغلو في دينكم, don't go overboard in your religion. Don't. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, he said, وَصَارَ كَثِيرٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْبِدَعِ مِثْلُ الْخَوَارِجِ وَالْرَوَافِضِ وَالْقَدَرِيَةِ وَالْمُمَثِّلَةِ وَالْمُمَثِّلَةِ يَعْتَقِدُونَ اِعْتِقَادًا هُوَ ضَلَالٌ يَرَوْنَهُ هو الحق ويرون كفر من خالفهم في ذلك فيصير فيهم شوب قوي من أهل الكتاب في كفرهم بالحق وظلمهم للخلق ولعل أكثرهم هؤلاء المكفرين يكفر بالمقالة التي لا تفهم حقيقتها ولا تعرف حجيتها شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية has a very long statement but he mentions that the groups like the Rawafid and the Qadariya and the Jahmiya and Many of the innovators and the khawarij, they believe a false belief. They believe a belief, it is misguidance. But what they see is that their misguidance is the truth. That's how they see it. The khawarijji believes what he's upon is the truth. The rafidi, on the other hand, believes what he's upon is the truth. The qadari does, the jahmi does, the mumathila does, meaning the one who resembles Allah to his creation. All of them. They believe what they are upon is the truth. And they also see that the individual who opposes them to be a kafir. And he said this is a clear-cut resemblance of the people of the scripture, the Christians and the Jews. Because the Christians and the Jews were seeing what they were upon to be the truth. And they were placing takfir on those who oppose them, the Christians and the Jews see you as a kafir. And Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah says the reason why they fell into that was because they went extreme either in exaggeration or extreme in negligence. That's the reason. And today, if you look at many Muslims today, the ones who are extreme in exaggeration, like ISIS and supporters like that, Boko Haram and Al-Qaeda supporters and the likes of it, what do you find in them? That whoever opposes them uh, is a disbeliever or whatever. On the other side of the spectrum are the liberals, those who are The Christians even and the Jews to them is a Muslim now. You know, they'll say to you, rivers, ponds, lakes, different names, they all contain water. 
all religions, different names, Muslim, Christianity, Judaism, it's all different names, but they all are true. They give you those false principles. And that's another extreme. That's another extreme. Both side of the spectrums, those who are extreme in negligence and those who are extreme in exaggeration are both those types of groups. And they pose the truth. That's what we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the prayer. إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Oh Allah, guide us on the straight path. The path of those who you are being pleased with. And who are those who Allah is pleased with? Those who have wasatiyyah. They are moderate. They are in the middle. They are what? In the middle. They are not extreme in exaggeration, nor are they extreme in negligence. الْقَاعِدَةِ الثَّامِنَ وَثَلَاثُونَ The 38th qa'idah. أَنَّ الْمُخَالِفِينَ للسلف. Those who oppose the path of the Salaf فَتَحُوا They are the ones who open the door of what? بَابُ التَّشْكِيكِ فِي الدِّينِ They are the ones who open the door of doubt in the religion لِأَعْدَاءِ إِسْلَامِ For the enemies of Islam The innovators are the ones and the people of desires are the ones who open the door of doubt to the religion. In other words, they are the ones who allowed the disbelievers, they are the ones who allowed the disbelievers to be able to direct their arrows at the Muslims. They are the ones who did that. They are the ones who came and tried to expose Islam, the innovators. Every single time you look at Orientalists, Wallahi, look at Orientalists and what they write. If you look at the books that they take their references from and they refer back to are not books of the Sunnah and the ulama of the Sunnah. They don't refer back to that. They refer back to the books of Ahlul Bidah. And I said this once before, the Orient Orientalists now are trying to prove and they start to argue the preservation of the Qur'an, whether this Qur'an is even protected. Is it even preserved? Whose books do they use? Yeah, they use the books of the Rafidah. They will say, quotes and the evidences that the Rafida put forward. I told you before, Ibn Hazm rahimahullah, they argued with him, a group of Christians came to him and they argued with him. They argued with him. He mentions this in his kitab, Al-Fisal, Fil Milali Wal Ahwa'i Wal Nihal. They tried to argue him regarding the preservation of the Quran. And he said that this is a consensus amongst the Muslims, that the Quran is preserved. And they said, nah, it's not. And they said to him, a group of the Rafidah don't believe that. Ibn Hazm, he said, oh, those ones. Yeah, they're not Muslims, they're kuffar. Those you're talking about. We don't consider them to be Muslims, they're disbelievers. The Shia and the Rafidah are what? They're disbelievers in our eyes, they're not Muslims. So don't add them to the list. Don't add them to the list. In other words, don't make their dis differences as though Muslims differ. Muslims didn't differ. They, we consider them to be part of you guys. Are you with me, brothers? But that's how they are. That's how they are. Ahlul Bid'ah are the ones who weaken the Sunnah. They are the ones who weaken the religion. That it becomes very delicate and weak. And then the innovators, and then, then, and then the disbelievers are able to step, step into the, they are able to step into the religion and play around with it. So the scholars, they mention that, that's how they are. وَلِذَلِكْ Allah says in the Quran, لَوْ خَرَجُوا فِيكُمْ مَا زَادُوكُمْ إِلَّا خَبَالًا وَلَا أَوْضَعُوا خِلَالَكُمْ يَبْغُونَكُمُ الْفِتْنَةَ وَفِيكُمْ سَمَّاعُونَ لَهُمْ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالظَّالِمِينَ Allah also says, يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تَتَّخِذُوا الْيَهُودَ وَالنَّصَارَى أَوْلِيَاءَ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ وَبَعْضُ وَمَن يَتَوَلَّهُمْ مِنكُمْ فَإِنَّهُ مِنْهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ Allah mentions that the disbelievers وَلَوْ خَرَجُوا فِيكُمْ if they go out with you the hypocrites and they go out with you in the expeditions and the battles that you're going to Muhammad, all they will try to do is just find you your faults and your mistakes. If they go out with you, they want to see your faults and your mistakes and your slippings. So they can go to their friends, the disbelievers, and they can inform them about where you're weak at. And that's what they would do. They would always look at the Prophet and say, mm, this is how much is he? And they go to the Kuffar and they say, this is how much he is. If you want to attack him, if you want to attack him, he's weak from this side, attack him from this side. That's what they would do to the Prophet. So Allah says to them, if these hypocrites go with you, they are more of a problem for you than they are of any benefit for you. They're only there to do that. Al-Bid'ah like that. 
al bidah them being with you, reading your books, studying your work with you, is just to actually infiltrate you. That's all, that it, that's all it is. It's to know the ins and the outs of the Arabic language. It is to know the sunnah and the books of the sunnah very well. All they're doing that for is what? 